Forget the problems. I'll take care of the problems. They're gonna love waiting for it. It's a massacre. A nuclear plant in southwestern Japan is one step closer to restarting two reactors. Its new safety measures have been approved by the country's nuclear regulator. Okay. Um. I'm taking a moment here because I'm counting to ten. <laughs> because if I don't, I'm going to say some stuff about whoever it is that's offering you this counsel that would be indelicate. All of the reactors in Japan were idled after the 2011 disaster. This could mean a return of the industry. <laughs> I'm going back through the middle numbers right now <laughs> because as I'm approaching 10, it's not getting much better. But as NHK World's Noriko Okada reports, there are still safety concerns that need to be addressed. Japan's Nuclear Regulation Authority, or NRA, has released its decision on two reactors in Kagoshima Prefecture. It reviewed Sendai Nuclear Power Plant, operated by Kyushu Electric Power Company and confirms the plant has met the new safety standards. You're in over your heads. We have thoroughly examined the measures to tackle severe accidents and natural disasters to ensure safety. I believe we have made a major change. You think to yourself as a rational person, who would be monumentally stupid enough to think that that made sense? All of Japan's 48 reactors are offline. Three years ago, an earthquake and tsunami damaged the Fukushima Daiichi power plant. It was the catalyst for reform of the industry's safety standards. The NRA has been conducting screenings based on strict new rules which went into effect last year. The focus is how earthquake resistant the facilities are. The NRA now wants to know the maximum magnitude of possible earthquakes and tsunami. The operator of the Sendai plant set higher estimates for tremors and waves. And the NRA gave priority to the plant, saying those estimates were appropriate. Workers at the plant are hurrying to finish all the upgrades. They have built 10 meter high walls to protect equipment from tsunami, a breakwater, and they installed pipes that can withstand tremors. We will complete the task quickly so that the plant's operations can be resumed as soon as possible. Perhaps I could offer an alternative. The NRA approved the upgraded design and safety features of the Sendai plant at a Wednesday meeting. The decision was welcomed by the government. We would like to push forward restarting the reactors with the conclusion of the safety screening and understanding of local people. Predator perverts. But not everyone was understanding. Many are making their voices heard over the safety concerns. Many people are rallying in front of the building where MRA's office is located. They are yelling and holding signs to show their discontent towards the decision. Protesters say the screening of the plant was fast and sloppy and that the evacuation plan for residents is insufficient. People living near the site are split over the decision. I don't want it to be restarted. I'm concerned about the safety of the next generation. I agree with the restart because it is necessary for us. Some locals benefit from it. Right you are, Ken. And next up, Ollie Soft Bombs. He's a team handballer from the Twin Cities. They have special insulated sacks to keep their balls from freezing. Oh! 
Oh, and he sacks himself into the grinder. Let's take another look at that. Right here, you can see the brain scrambler Vic claim another victim. The NRA's decision isn't final. The regulator will take a month to collect comments from the public. Then they will look for approval from local municipalities. And there are still on-site operational checks to be done. The Sendai plant faces many challenges in regaining trust of those who are cautious about the safety of the nuclear energy. Thank you for a memorable afternoon. Usually one must go to a bowling alley to meet a woman of your stature. Noriko Kada, NHK World. Now, crews at the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear plant are carrying out decommissioning work that will take decades. Managers at the plant are stepping up efforts to improve their employees' long-term working environment, but they're facing many obstacles. NHK World's Yoichiro Tatewa went for an inside look on this edition of Nuclear Watch. Cleaning up Fukushima Daiichi is a big job. Workers are removing radioactive contamination and decommissioning damaged reactors at the same time. The area around the crippled buildings still has high levels of radiation. People here work in shifts and take breaks every few hours. This is the resting place for workers. So whenever workers finish their works or they wait for another works, they spend the time here, like relaxing, maybe having a cup of tea, water, or reading magazines. As many as 6,000 workers come to the site every day. Their schedules are designed to minimize radiation exposure. TEPCO officials explain most of the people here are employees of subcontracting companies. It means the utility is not directly responsible for their safety. But TEPCO officials have started taking measures to improve conditions at the plant. We consider improving the working environment to be a top priority. They are constructing a new facility for workers. The building will have a dining space where hot meals will be sold. It will also have devices people can use to check their internal radiation exposure. It's not just spaces for breaks that are getting improvements. An example is this vehicle repair factory. Nothing like it existed here before it was built. That worry many workers. The vehicles here can't leave because they may be contaminated. So if one broke down or needed repairs, there was no way to fix it. Now, that problem has been solved. Ensuring worker safety is essential for safe and speedy decommissioning. But experts say more needs to be done to ensure the safety of workers. At Fukushima Daiichi, the task of checking workers' health is handled by the companies that hire them. But what we need is a centralized system for checking the health of all workers. Okazaki says the Japanese government needs to establish a system for making sure the workers are healthy. There are other issues to consider when workers finish a shift. They are required to take off their protective gear. Their clothing and equipment is treated as contaminated waste. TEPCO is now constructing an incineration facility to deal with it. But the manager overseeing the project says he's not sure when it will be ready. All of us have to stop working right when our shifts end to minimize radiation exposure. It's not like a normal construction site. He says under these conditions, it's hard to stay on schedule. TEPCO has a lot riding on the safety of the plant's workers. Their health and well-being is critical to the success of the decommissioning project. Yoichiro Tateiwa, NHK World, Kushima Daichi.